never stop casting. Chase the Dream. Welcome to Season 5 of Musky Mastery Outdoors. Brought to you by Joe Booker Outdoors. Number one in big game fish products. And by Recon Boats. Made by craftsmen. Built for fishermen. You know, I, I really I really think that this this topic that we're going to talk about, and I'm going to get to it, you're like, well, what, what, what are we talking about? Maybe you saw it in the, the title of the video. It is, how long should I spend on a musky spot? And this question is surprisingly complex. Uh, if you thought you were in for an easy answer here, uh, the answer is no. Uh, and I have, I've written uh, a few notes down, about two pages of notes. So we'll see how long that takes us to get through. Um, but this is a really cool topic. I'm super excited to dive into this, and uh, we'll start with that. So how long do I spend on a musky spot, and where do we even begin thinking about this? Well, for me, I kind of start with this idea of, you know, spot type. So I'm just gonna say, uh, you know, we'll just call it spot type. And what I mean spot type is this, you know, A, is it an A spot? Is it a B spot? Is it a C spot? Or is it, uh, you know, new water? All of these things play a big factor, and, and we're going to talk about other factors too. But right off the gate, right out of the gate, you know, if and, and by the way, in this in this video, and we can do more videos like this if you if you uh, if you want, we are going to assume, by the way, that this spot that we're fishing today, as we as we eventually dive in here and answer this question, we're going to assume that the spot today is theoretically an A spot, uh, and we're going to go from there. But Let's say you're watching this and you've got, you know, maybe you only know some C spots. I hope you know more than some C spots. Maybe they're A spots, maybe they're only B spots, or maybe you've just moved somewhere and you're on a new body of water. All these things go into uh, the amount of time that I'll fish uh, a certain spot. So that's the first thing. Again, tonight we're going to, and these are just some basic things, some ballpark ideas here. Uh, first thing we're going to look at is, you know, is it a good spot? Is it a, so by A spot, what do we mean, what do we mean by that? I mean that this is a spot that produces year in, year out. This is a spot that produces spring, summer, fall, and all the way up to ice up, usually. This is a spot, an A spot, and probably a B spot, or spots that you know are producers for my clients. When I have inexperienced anglers sometimes fishing these spots, these are spots I'm confident in to put uh, put my you know paying customers on top of fish and get them bit, get that rod bent. So. These are the, you know, that, that's what I mean by A and B spots. C spot might be, might be a spot under construction for me. And by under construction, I mean like maybe it's a spot I'm still learning. Maybe it's a big spot I don't quite understand fully yet. Um, or maybe I just haven't had a lot of success there yet, but I think it's, I think it's going to be good. Okay. You can imagine um, in that A and B range, I'm going to be spending probably more time there. And again, that's really weather dependent. We're going to talk about all that. But the next thing I'm going to look at, you know, is, is I'm looking at my spots. We, we start talking about it. And again, we're going to really dive in here. But these are the big picture, like opening, opening ideas here. We're going to look at, you know, weather patterns. So by weather pattern, you know, we're going to, you know, are we, is it prime? Is it um, average? Or is it uh, poor? And we're going to talk about what it's what you know what a really good A spot looks like when the conditions are poor versus when the conditions are prime. So those are some some really important things that we're gonna we're gonna kind of take a look at tonight. How does weather affect that? And then and then another one, and that you you guys and gals out there know that I'm all over this. You know we'll we'll put that you know so lunar phases. You know, is it, do we have a, you know, moonrise to work with, a moon set? Um, are we under, you know, full moon uh, versus new moon? That's, that's huge. What time of the month is it? Is it the full moon phase? Is it that, that first half? Or are we at the, the second half? Or is it the, uh, the new moon phase? Um, is it minor or major? You know, and, and, you know, how that, how that kind of combines here with the weather is, is huge. And then how all of those combine with, is it an A spot, a B spot, or a C spot, or is it a new spot? So all of these things kind of, kind of, uh, you know, run together here in my mind. So we're going to, we're going to kick this thing off here. So this, these are some basic ideas that I just wanted to kind of point out as we begin our conversation tonight, this afternoon, it could be in the morning, whenever you're watching this video, these are some big picture topics, okay? But for, for this video, okay, we are going to operate 
under the assumption that we know this spot very well. I know this spot very well. Um, this spot that I'm going to draw up, I'm going to make, I'm going to make up a fictional uh, spot here, fictional spot. We are going to assume that this spot is an excellent producer of muskies of all sizes. It's produced some trophy fish for me. It has produced some, uh, you know, mediums, some smalls, and everything in between. It's a good producer of muskies um, throughout the throughout the season. This is a this spot that I'm going to draw up here is a it's a great spot in the spring. It's a great spot in the fall, and uh, you know. This is a spot again that I that I touched on and being in here as we as we kind of kick things off. I depend on this spot, um, you know, to put my clients on fish to get fish in the boat, both for me for filming the YouTube channel. So so all of that. So I'll probably draw a spot up here as I go. But there's a couple things that I want to talk about here. These are really important things, and um, maybe I'll just I'll talk about this. Is and th this is this is a huge. A huge, you know, as we as we go into it, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you actual times in this video. You want to know how long I'm gonna spend on a spot? I'm gonna tell you in this video how long approximately I, I might spend on a given spot. But one of the first things we want to look at is is this. You know, how big is the spot? Because this is a really 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 important factor in uh, you know how long I'm gonna spend on a spot. If I've got, let's say, a small, tiny reef, okay, let's say this is, sometimes I call these penny bars, okay, let's say I've got, you know, a tiny reef here, um, I can clearly, you know, cast over this entire reef, and there might be, there might be just, this is oftentimes a small spot there, maybe it's got some weeds on it, okay, we'll call, you know, it's a small weed reef here, something like that, here's some vegetation, okay, and it, maybe it's a one musky spot verse, let's say we've got a, a major, and this will probably be the type of spot, you know, let's say we've got a major, a major, you know, reef here again. Well, and, and again, and it depends how diverse this is, but let's say this, this spot is huge, okay? And we've got weeds, let's say we, we've got, we've got boulders, you know, we, we've got, you know, we've got cribs, you name it. Um, if this spot is big, here's, here's the deal with big spots, okay? And here's why this is important. Big spots have the ability, now this is, these are generalities, okay? So don't pin me on one of these. Big spots have the ability to hold multiple muskies. Whereas small spots, let's say I can, I can easily cast over this, this spot here, okay? This spot may hold one, it may hold two, it may hold three or five. A lot of times I have found, generally speaking, that the smaller spots usually um, have a tendency to hold less fish. Now, whether that's one or two, fine. Big spots, and again, I don't want to use up all my maggots here. Big spots have a tendency to hold multiple fish on the prime structure and also lots of fish hanging out here suspended or in relation to that spot. So, what am I getting at here? Before we even dive into a spot and we dive into, um, you know, a situation here, we want to kind of understand that smaller spots, not only do they take less time to fish, but I'm going to, well, that's just that. I'm going to spend less time fishing a small spot because I can fish it effectively and efficiently, usually, you know, under normal conditions. Whereas if I have a big spot here, and that, you know, I, this spot, again, I'm not trying to do this justice. Um, let's say I can't, let's say even this right here, this spot here, Let's say I can't cast over that. This is truly a, it's, it's a big, it's a big spot, you know. Maybe, you know, maybe this, maybe this even right here, you know. Um, maybe this spot right here is, you know, maybe this is, you know, 150 yards. You know, maybe, maybe this is, this is, this is big. Maybe this is, you know, 10 foot here, 20. Maybe we've got a, you know, a deep hole here. This is, you know, this is 40 feet, you know. 50 and so forth. So we've got, you know, we're in proximity to, to, to big deep water, at least in the systems I fish in northern Wisconsin, you know, on a flowage system. We've got some deep water here. This is a big spot. Again, I'm going to spend more time fishing a big spot. That's one of the first things I'm going to look at. Another thing I'm going to look at here, as we, as we kind of dive in, I might have to move some of my muskies here, is, you know, so these, so these are other things I'm thinking about, okay, as I'm just going through my notes here. You want to know a couple big picture things about the system. Um, is there current in the system? 
by current, I mean, is there water flow? I'm not talking about surface flow from wind, but I'm talking about, is this a flowage system? Does it have current? Does current affect my spot? Now, if I'm on a flowage, I'm always gonna tell you that current is gonna affect these spots. It's going to affect uh, you know, some spots more than others. Obviously, your neck downs and things like that. We might get into that here as we go. Um, and that may be an option for another video. But that's something I'm looking at. Um, if, the, if the dam is open and that current is running through a spot, I am probably going to spend more time fishing that spot. Whereas, you know, again, if, if the dam is closed or if it's a spot that usually has current, but, you know, maybe the dam is closed or there's, there's very little by closed, I mean, you know, there's, there's not a lot of current moving through. I may spend less time there. Again, these are big picture ideas that I think about well in advance of, of fishing that spot. Um, is there heavy wind hitting a spot? You know, if, if a spot is getting blown, you know, hit by wind, now, you know, for example, um, let's, just, let's just look at our, you know, a couple, our big spot versus small spot here, just for, just for an idea here. If the small spot is, you know, prime, with wind, okay? For example here, and let's say the big spot has no wind and it's slack. I may end up actually fishing more time or spending more time fishing a small spot under prime wind conditions. And if there's, if there's current moving through an area, then I might fish a big spot that may have a tendency to hold more muskies because maybe I'm going to you know, explore the area around for suspended muskies. Maybe I'm going to troll around this. If there's more wind pushing in here, I think that maybe there's a chance that there's more bait fish holding there. You know, that may sway me in the amount of time that I'm going to spend fishing a given spot. So even though that smaller spot, of course, may not, statistically speaking, you know, hold as many muskies as a large spot, if the conditions are good on the big spot, I'm probably not going to spend a lot of time there. So conditions, you know, we're talking weather, we're talking wind, we're talking moon, time of the month, time of the year. Um, these are all things. Water clarity. Water clarity is, a, is another big factor. Um, some spots fish better under different water clarities. Um, and it just depends, you know, sometimes you get, you know, water color changes, uh, even in flowage systems where there's current um, throughout, you know, June, July, and into August. There's a lot of color change on your water. If you haven't noticed that, take a look, check it out. If you haven't uh, paid attention to water clarity and how that might dictate the amount of time you're spending on a given spot, well, for example, if your water is really dirty, let's say maybe you're fishing a flowage system and the water level rises, you may have a lot of debris. Uh, you may have a lot of silt and runoff that clouds up the water. So you may have a great spot like this that's, again, holding lots, lots of muskies here. But if the conditions are poor and the fish can't see your lure, we might not spend a lot of time fishing that spot. So that's what I'm talking about with regard to water clarity. If you've got good water clarity or, or normal water clarity, everything's go. But if you've got a great spot and the water clarity is poor, um, a lot of the, you know a lot of my time on Lake of the Woods, uh, I've noticed that you know we have a lot of water clarity changes depending on the current that's moving through that system. Same goes for some of the the, the you know the wonderful flowages I fish in northern Wisconsin. Sometimes that that uh, water clarity is poor and we won't spend very very long on a, on even a, one of our best spots. That's just the way it goes. The other thing I'm thinking about is what's the bite like overall. Uh, is it a weed bite versus rock bite? Um, if it's a weed bite, you know, maybe I'm spending more time picking apart weed structure. If it's a rock bite, you know, again, arguably, maybe I'm spending more time picking apart that structure. But these are things I'm thinking about when I'm, when I'm talking time. This can dictate the amount of time I'm spending. Um, arguably, I might say that, that weed cranking is more intricate than rock cranking. So um, if I've got a hot crankbait bite and the fish are holding in weed cover, I'm gonna spend overall more time fishing that spot, um, you know, fishing that weed spot versus a rock spot. It, it generally will take longer to pick through and find comb, uh, you know, find, just, just comb through a spot with weeds. Um, you know, and again, this just goes back to, you know, is it a blade bite? If the bite's hot on blades, you know, even if, even if a spot's huge, I'm gonna be fishing faster because I'm gonna be moving, I'm gonna be running and gunning, blades and topwaters. Uh, but if the, the bite is, is tough, 
I'm gonna be spending more time on that spot. So again, some big picture ideas for you to round this out. These are big picture topic ideas that I'm thinking about when I'm spending time. And uh, from there, <laughs> I say, but here we go in my notes. Okay, so let's dive in here now. So we, we've, we've opened it up here this evening um, with a couple big picture ideas, okay? Things that are, that are floating around in my head. And when I say floating around in my head, this could be, you know, while I'm fishing, another spot. You know, I might, I, a lot of times as I'm, as I'm working through um, a, given, a given spot, you know, or, you know, whatever it is on my milk run, and I'm thinking about the next spot, and I'm thinking about the next five spots. I'm, I'm, I'm always strategizing. I, I'm taking that data from my electronics, from my follows, from my catch data, from previous days, from previous years, and other data that I, you know, talking with other guides and other close friends of mine that are fishing the same waters. I'm taking all of this in, synthesizing it, and then trying to figure out where I want to go and how much time I want to spend on given spots. So I'm always putting a plan together. But here we go. Uh, so tonight, we're going to, again, I, how many times have I told you, by the way, we're going to crack this off and we're going to, oh, here we are, we're, we're diving in. So if you've made it through uh, the first 15 minutes of the video, we're actually getting to it now. So, okay. Um, the first thing in, in here, I'll just, I'll just draw this, this hypothetical spot here again. I'm going to make this kind of cool. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make a really cool spot here. We're going to have an underwater reef. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Here's an underwater reef, and it's a part of a channel system. So how cool is that, all right? Um, I'm going to have an underwater reef that uh, is a part of a channel, okay? So, and, and let's just pretend in, in this spot, and I'm going I'm to make a, a real just, just awesome spot here, okay? Let's say we've got, you know, weeds. Let's just say we've got a, you know, an underwater cabbage reef here. And uh, let's say that we, you know, we've got cabbage here and we've got cabbage here, okay? So far, this is looking really good. Um, let's say we've got some, some boulders, you know, mixed in, mixed in boulders, maybe some rocks or something like that. Maybe some, maybe some rocks out here. There's always, maybe there's some debris, there's some, some, some deadfalls and some, some, man-made structure here. Maybe there's some cribs out here, okay? So this is looking pretty good. And again, uh, for this particular spot, we'll just say that the, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll say the current is, we'll just call this flow. We'll say it's flow in that direction, something like that. So we've got current bottlenecking here, and uh, that's pretty cool. So pretty cool looking spot. This is a big spot. So, uh, Again, for for this for this uh, you know for this breakdown, we're going to say this this spot likely holds multiple muskies, uh, and it it holds some fish out deep. Um, we'll add a couple more things to the spot. We'll say let's say it tops off at uh, six feet, and maybe that that edge. Maybe this is like uh, nine foot nine foot edge here. Maybe this is out in, you know, 12 feet, 15, and then out here, maybe we, maybe we drop off to 30 foot. Maybe we've got a, you know, some kind of deep hole out here, um, you know, in, in kind of the basin area. And, you know, maybe, maybe, it, it, uh, maybe it stays kind of deep in this, in this neck down here. Maybe we go from 25 to 20 to, you know, 10 here, something like that. So... So we've got, you know, a, a really diverse looking spot here, uh, something like that. So that, that looks pretty cool, right? Okay. So one of the first things that, that I do, okay, is I let the wind guide me, lead me toward the spot. Um, if the wind is right, so let's just assume, uh, I don't know, let's just assume I've got a, a wind here. Maybe I'll move Mr. Muskie over here. Maybe this Muskie's out suspended here. Let's just say I've got a, a real nice um, south breeze blowing. I don't know. We'll call this just a, a south breeze here. And, and that's just, I mean, this is prime, right? I mean, it's a south wind, which usually is in alignment with um, a quality weather system, either moving in, um, 
or maybe on its way out, but this is this is prime, okay? And I like to let the wind lead me to the spot because usually surface current in my in in my experience activates a spot. So it's not that a spot like this would be, and this is again the prime spot we're gonna consider, and we're also gonna consider the neck down area prime as well. So this neck down area here and the side here and the point, and maybe there's some other things here. I mean, clearly we'll talk about spots of interest, but there's an inside turn here that's really key. Obviously you've got the main point. Maybe this boulder is important. You've got inside turns here and inside turns here, um, and you've got grass up here. And then you've got, you know, this and then all of this, and you've got, you know, anywhere out here you might find muskies too. So wind usually leads me in the right direction. It serves to activate a spot. Um, it is likely, uh, if it's been blowing for any certain period of time, is likely blowing bait fish into uh, a, given, a given area. So that's the first thing I'm looking for is does it have wind? Um, and again, this is something that prior to pulling up to this spot, I've already thought about it. I've, I'm already thinking, uh, does the spot have wind on it? If, if I have... If, if I've walked through that as I'm fishing some other spot and I say, no, it doesn't have wind on it, I may not go look at it. So right off the, right out of the gate again, I'm, I'm already have thought this through. So I know this, this spot's got wind blowing on, so I'm gonna go check it out, okay? Um, and as I start to fish a spot, okay, I'm usually, usually under, under you know, normal circumstances, which I would say would be, la you know, let's just say, 20 miles an hour and lower in wind, okay? So we'll say 15 mile an hour, you know, normal wind. I'm going to position my bow into the wind. Um, now again, this, I, you know, maybe I'll start it here and I, I just don't wanna cover all this up. I might start over here and go into the wind this way. Um, I might actually attack this spot in a number of different directions, but the bottom line is I'm looking at the wind to guide me there. And I'm, and I'm also looking for other signs of life. I'm looking for muskies porpoising up on top of the spot. I'm looking for otters. Um, birds, loons, diving here, looking for, for food. These are all things I'm looking for as I, as I begin fishing with my eyes, but I'm also watching for signs of movement with my electronics. You know, am I seeing muskies on my side imaging? Uh, am I seeing muskies on my 2D sonar? Um, all those types of things. Do I, do I see other anglers fishing the cribs or they're fishing, uh, do I see, uh, you know, one of the local walleye guides fishing um, a little inside turn with some gravel for walleyes. If I do, and I see them, and I see them catching fish, we're gonna be, we're gonna be all systems go. So these are, these are all the things I'm looking for. Now, here's option one, okay? Let's say we, you know, conditions are prime again. Um, we're not gonna really talk about moon phases yet, but you know, it's just, we've got a good wind blowing, and uh, we're gonna fish this spot and we're gonna assume we fish this spot through without seeing a strike. Everything looks good. We've got bait fish. We've got surface current. We've got actual flow current in the, in the flowage. Okay, we've got current in the flowage, damp current. Um, I'm really confident right now that this spot is gonna hold fish. I haven't seen a follow yet, okay? But I'm super confident there's muskies here. Now, if I'm now, here's where we're going to kind of dive into the nuts and bolts here. If I'm really confident, let's say, let, and here's, here's something really important that I want to talk about. Every system, every spot that I, that I fish has, has three parts to it. I call it a three tier system. Okay. Cause people always ask, well, you know, again, in this, in this conversation of how long do you fish a spot? Well, you know, let's say we're working the primary break here, the edge. Okay. And I, and I have somebody in the boat go, well, Hey, why don't we fish in like two feet of water? Or why don't we fish, why are we fishing this nine foot break when we could be fishing the six foot top? Now keep in mind that this is not to scale. Or I could have somebody say, well, why aren't we throwing out here? Out in the open water, shouldn't we do it all? Shouldn't we throw a little in up here and throw a little out here? I say no. And this, I think there's three tiered, there's three tiers to every spot, okay? You got super shallow, which is zero to three feet, maybe. You've got, and this is all relative to the water you fish, so apply your own numbers. You've got your mid-range, okay? Mid-range is gonna be, um, I call that the edge, okay? So in this case, my edge is, you know, let's call it seven to nine feet, okay? So we're not fishing, we're not targeting muskies that are super shallow here. 
And then we've got suspended. We've got we've got uh, option option three, which is deep. Okay, and that's suspended. Now, getting back to what I was talking about here, let's say all conditions are prime, and we fish the edge. Let's say we fish the primary weed edge here. We fish the break, and we don't see anything. Do you move on? So first of all, time wise here, I have this written down. You know, on a big spot. Let's just say this is a big spot. It may take me an hour to single-handedly, or even with a partner, it may take me one hour to fish this entire spot here, to thoroughly cast it. I'm talking about casting, you know, casting the spot perpendicular. And, uh, you know, so this is perpendicular to the weed edge and parallel to the weed edge along here, okay? Um, perpendicular and parallel, okay? This may take me 45 minutes to an hour to do, okay, without blinking an eye. And let's say again, we see, we see no fish, no follows. Does that mean we need to leave? It depends how confident you are in the spot. It depends on, on past catch data, okay? If I'm super confident, so we just talked about fishing tier two with no success, do you go in and fish tier one? It depends, sometimes you do. Sometimes you might wanna go in here and spend 10 minutes fishing some, some shallow, I'm just gonna draw in some rocks here. Let's say we fish some shallow rock shelf up here that I normally, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I don't fish it all the time. Maybe the muskies are there. If it's a big spot and it has the capacity, has the capability, I should say, has the capability to have the capacity, have large muskie capacity, then you may want to consider fishing tier one. Now, if you fish tier one and you fish tier two and you don't see anything, what do you do? Maybe you move on. Now, if I start marking, let's say, when would you fish tier, tier three? Let's say we fish tier two. Again, tier two in this situation is, and I'll mark it, this is tier one, is super shallow. Tier two is the edge, and tier three is gonna be, you know, a little bit more open water suspended. Um, when might I fish, again, having no visual follows, when might I spend more time outside of an hour? Well, what if I mark a muskie on my side imaging out here? What if I mark another muskie on my side imaging, you know, out here? So, in this case, we're, we're fishing, you know, we're fishing that tier two contour. We haven't seen any fish casting perpendicular and parallel, you know, up onto the flat, maybe not all the way up onto the flat, but we're not seeing the dish, but all of a sudden I kind of, am, I see one and maybe I keep going and I see two, maybe I see three, maybe I see three muskies sitting out in deeper water. Well, then you gotta say, okay, the spot's big, it can hold fish, Maybe these fish at this point are, you know, maybe, maybe there's no current and, you know, maybe, maybe those fish aren't holding this tight to the structure. Should I spend time fishing out here? Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe you should spend an hour and a half fishing this spot. I don't know. I mean, if it takes me an hour to fish the spot, you know, it, traditionally, what's an extra 20 minutes to go test a couple of those areas where I've seen fish on my side imaging? Or what, why don't I go fish a couple cribs or a couple high percentage, maybe suspended areas? I might do that if the electronics uh, say that I should, okay? Now, um, so that's option one. You know, I, I, I will fish if, again, I'm just gonna sum this up one more time because in my mind, I'm kind of like, well, if I made my point clear. If I'm fishing a spot that is, is you know, high likelihood of holding a muskie or multiple, which let's just say in this case, multiple muskies, I will spend some real quality time fishing it. I'll usually take, of the three tiers that I discussed, I'll usually take one and I will really fish it in detail. Whether that is up in the flat, whether that is the edge, or, wet, or, or whether that is more basin related um, fish that might be suspended in relation to the spot. But I'm gonna fish it thoroughly if I think there's fish there. I am not just gonna do a woo, I'm not just gonna roll through it, okay? Um, if the bite's tough, and, you know, if, if the conditions are prime, but the bite has been challenging, as was 2022, everybody here knows that, okay? I still will spend a significant part of, you know, significant time picking a spot like this apart, okay? Even without seeing a muskie, because I know they're there. I know there are fish here, whether they are out here over open water, or whether they are up 
super shallow or if they are on the edge but just not moving. I know there are fish here, so I'm going to spend time fishing it. It's a prime spot. The analogy with a big, a big, a big physical geographical spot, it's like the Walmart Supercenter. Everybody in town goes to Walmart to get everything from food to clothing to automotive stuff to fishing gear and movies. Everybody's there. Musky spots are like that too. When you got a big musky spot and you fish through this and you don't see anything, do you move on? Again, it depends how confident you are. It depends if you're seeing things on your electronics. Now, here's another option. Let's say we're fishing this spot, we're fishing tier two, okay? And I get a follow from this beautiful barred muskie, okay? Let's say I got a couple of shallow there. And let's say I get a follow here from this, from this muskie on the edge, just like I suspected, just where I thought she was gonna be, right on this inside turn that I've kind of shaded over here. Muskie's right where, where she should be, okay? Um, but let's say she doesn't commit. Let's say this is a, a visual follow in this case, okay? You know, how long, you know, what, what do we do here? We, we kind of hit on this in the last whiteboard, um, on the, on the last whiteboard video, but right, right then and there. So let's say, you know, let's, let's say hypothetically, oh, I don't know, maybe let's say this fish is here and let's say I've already put in, let's say for the, for, for the sake of this example, let's say I'm all the way here and I'm actually going downwind. Let's say the wind's, you know, reasonable here. And I gotta, I gotta follow here and I'm 45 minutes into this spot, but the fish doesn't commit. What do you do? First thing, and, and this is, you know, classic, uh, you know, Rule of thumb for me, cast backs, okay? Uh, if the fish is super aggressive, I might upsize. We talked about that in the last whiteboard video. Um, I'm gonna change angles. I'm gonna come at that fish. I'm gonna come right at it, probably right away. I'm gonna come at it, you know, from left, right. I might move my boat depending on, you know, where this fish came from. And I might, I might come on the other side of the reef and throw at it from another direction. I've got plenty of YouTube videos that, that show me doing this and, and succeeding with these tactics. But let's say I don't see the muskie. Let's say she doesn't show up. Then what do you do? Well, actually, I, I do need to point this out. And this is a, this is a, a and I, I've talked about this in, a, in old, old vlog videos years ago, okay? And I learned this with my good buddy, Joe Booker. Um, actually, it was actually on, a, on a, one of our best spots on Lake of the Woods, on the biggest muskie I have still to date ever seen. And here's the rule I learned. If the muskie keeps following, you keep coming back to that muskie, especially if the muskie's big, especially if the muskie's big. If this muskie that I saw here keeps following, and I'm 45 minutes in, and she keeps showing up on cast back option three, on cast back option four, and they do this. If you haven't experienced this yet, you will. On cast back option six, I got this muskie moving around the boat. You keep going at that fish until she stops. You have that fish up, you have that, you have that fish in a unique spot, don't stop casting at that muskie. I don't care if you're an hour into the fish in this spot. You keep going at that fish. If it's a big fish and it's showing itself, you keep going at that fish. Don't stop chasing that muskie, especially if it's big. You may never see that muskie again, ever, ever. All season long, you might never see it again in your life especially if it's a tank. So always go back on those fish. But let's say the fish loses interest, then what do you do? I'll come back on that fish. Moonrise, moonset, major period. Um, sunrise, sunset, light change, uh, you know, you name it. Wind, rain, any, any type of environmental change. Go back on that fish. How many times during the day? It's a classic question. How long are we gonna fish a spot? How many times during the day will I go back on a fish? Well, here's, here's an easy way to answer that question. It depends how big it is. All muskies are good muskies. You're not gonna hear me say anything different than that, okay? But if it's a big muskie, if it's a special fish, you bet your butt I'm gonna go and be chasing that muskie numerous times. I might, I might, I might visit that spot six times in a day. Same darn spot. On any time I suspect, if there's a barometric pressure change, I'm back. If there's a wind change, I'm back. If there's a light change, I'm back. Night, I'm back. It depends how bad I want that muskie. If she showed some aggression, 
I am going to get aggressive in chasing that fish. So it's hard to answer how long I might spend on the spot. In our, in our situation here, I've already put an hour in. Oh, I might, over the course of a day, that may add up to three or four hours. I don't know. And again, it depends. If it's a big spot like we've kind of theorized here, if, if Big Mama's not home, you know, Big Daddy might show up or, or Little Cousin Jimmy might show up. You don't know who's going to show up on these spots. So revisiting them, you may end up spending, you might end up spending a lot of time in these spots. It's tough to say. Okay, but so periodically check good spots all day long during the, during the hunt. Now this is easier said on smaller bodies of water. Again, now if you're fishing big bodies of water, you may just not be in geographical, you might not be in striking distance of that spot. So checking it all day long, you might say, well, Martin, I just can't do that. And you're absolutely right. Or you might say, Martin, I got a 25 horse motor. I can't just beeline it back to that spot, you know, at a, at a whim because the, the wind is going to be too hard to get through. I might not be able to check it till tomorrow. It is what it is. But if you have the capability to check it and you got a big fish there or you suspect one's there, go back and take a look at it. Okay. Here's option three. Okay. Option three is you catch that muskie. Okay. Let's say again, in our scenario here, we're 45 minutes in, you catch a beautiful muskie near the end of your run on this spot. Okay. Right where you, on one of, let's say a spot like this could have one, two, three, four, five, six. It might have seven, eight, nine, ten. It might have, it might have ten quality muskie holding spots. Okay. Let's say you catch one. Always, 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 did I mention always? Always, after you release that muskie, go back to that exact location and cast that exact same lure at that exact same target. Many, many, many times. And if you have not experienced this yet, you're going to experience it, okay? If you're new to the sport, it's fantastic. These muskies are wolf pack predators. I don't even know sometimes what I call them wolf pack predators as I call them, they're shopping at Walmart. If this is Walmart, they're all going there for food. They may pack up, they may just happen to be there. Whatever it is, biologically or, you know, ecologically speaking, they're, they're there to eat a lot of times, okay? Assuming this isn't like, we're not targeting these muskies under the spawn, of course, no one would do that. Um, but these fish are there to eat, okay? And always go back. So, so that's something that's really important. Um, I will also, you know, if I end up catching one at the end of at the end of my run in that spot, and conditions are prime, um, I may go check that exact spot. But you know, I don't know. You, it's maybe maybe I'll take off. Maybe I'll, if the conditions are good again, I might go try to hit a couple other spots than striking distance that. I think might have muskies on them. Okay, again, it just depends on how big the spot is. So, um, so there we go. So you may, you know, once you catch a muskie or you see a muskie, if the spot traditionally takes an hour to fish, you know, I may end up, you know, if I get a follow, I may end up spending on right at that moment. I might end up spending like an extra fifteen or twenty minutes on that spot. If I catch a muskie and we're filming and then I go back and I mean, I might end up spending another hour on that spot. It just depends. It just depends on the conditions. These things are very hard to say. As you can see, there's a lot of things that go into this. Now, here's a fourth option to kind of round this video out. Some of you are saying you should have rounded this video out an hour ago, Martin. Okay, well, let's say you're still, you haven't fallen asleep yet and uh, here's option four, okay? Let's say I'm, so let's say we're not on this spot. Let's say I'm somewhere far away or within striking distance. I'm fishing with some clients and I'm thinking through my spot selection. Where am I going to go next? And um, let's say the wind is not right. So let's erase our wind and let's say we've got a cold front. No, no, it's just for this example, the wind is, you know, maybe, maybe not prime. We've got a north wind. And let's say there's no current or something, and let's just say things don't look good, okay? Do I still go and fish this spot? And if I do, how long am I going to fish it? I do this a lot, whether you call it spot checks or spot on the spot checks. A lot of times, if I'm with customers, I might say, well, look, this spot has high carrying capacity. It is a high likelihood of holding multiple fish. 
So we're not going to fish the full spot because the conditions aren't right. But we're going to go and check the spot on the spot. So let's just say the spot on the spot happens to be, um, maybe, maybe it's just this, this shallow rock hump on top, okay, something like that. Okay. And let's say the conditions are really crappy, okay. But we're going to go fish this spot here, and we're going to do what I call a 10-minute spot check. Okay, we're going to go in there, boom, 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 boom. We're just going to, we're going to cast right up to the spot on the spot. If we don't get a muskie there, we're out. I'm moving. We are gone. We aren't fishing this. We aren't fishing this. We aren't fishing this. We're just gone. And so a lot of times on prime spots, like really good spots, whether they're big or small, if the conditions suck, I may just, and if I'm running and gunning, I may just go check the the most prime spot. Like, you know, if again, if we're gonna what do I mean by that again? I'm saying like if there's if there's one, two, three, four, if there's like four producing spots on this reef that always produce muskies, but let's just say which one's the number one producer? Let's just say the number one producer in this in this hypothetical is this one. That's the one I'm going to check. I'm not going to check these other ones. That's just going to take too much time. Maybe there's some other spot where that north wind, you know, is blowing really, really nicely on a spot. Another spot sets up way better. I'm going to go check that spot. I'm going to go, maybe I'll, maybe I'll spend an hour fishing that spot. But sometimes it does pay to spot check your prime spots even under crappy conditions. That might be 10 minutes here and then go. And that's, that's some of the way that I think about that. So there you have it, folks. I hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. You know, how long do you spend on a musky spot? It depends on a lot of things. To sum this up, uh, and I, I think I've summed this up a number of times, but is, is there, you know, is there food there? Are you, are you seeing bait fish visually? Are you seeing on your electronics, okay? Is there current there? Whether that be actual current in the system um, due to you know flowage work, dam opening and closing, is there surface current? We're talking wind current, okay? So food and current, okay? Um, and you know, third thing, are you seeing, are you seeing bait? And we're talking about food, but are you seeing stuff with your electronics? You seeing muskies on your side imaging? If you're, you know, if you're, if you, if the wind is bad and there's no food there. And you're not seeing anything on your side imaging, you're seeing no muskies, then you're not gonna probably spend a lot of time on a spot. But if you're still listening to this, this presentation here, which I hope you all are, one thing you should know, and one thing that I I try to remind myself is that good spots can turn on at a moment's notice. If that current suddenly starts flowing in here, let's say it starts up. This spot can go from crap to a gold mine like that. And that's what you've got to be careful of. You can't for, you know, let's just say you got a north wind blowing for a couple days. The spot doesn't look good. But let's say that current starts up. You better start investigating this spot. Even though it doesn't look right, it may turn into a, a gold mine. And you've got to be careful for that. So you can't write spots off all the time just because they don't look perfect. You can make educated guesses. You, you, you know, in, in musky fishing, of course, we're always trying to spend our time wisely because you, know, you only get so many hours in a day. Those of you with families and work you know, uh, you know, obligations, you know that you know, we all know all of our time is limited. So you have to be very careful in how you spend it. So there you have it. Uh, that's my, at least we'll say part one of how long to spend on a musky spot. If you have further questions about this topic, if you'd like me to break down a different type of spot maybe, or maybe you heard something in this vlog that you liked and that you want more clarification on, at least within my experiences, uh, I would be happy to put that together. And as always, if, if there's another topic, this is this, you know, this how long do I, I spend on a musky spot was a topic that I got emails about and you know, messages about. So I say, let's do it. If you've got one that you'd like to hear, please leave it in the comments. There's a really good chance I'm going to do it this winter. Um, so let's have some fun with this. I really hope you guys and gals and everybody that, that uh, all of our, all of our fans and supporters here at Musky Master really hope you guys enjoyed this, this segment. And as always, thanks for watching.